Hello guys, Ken and Danny here. This is another episode about uh, different models and bikes and ranges of the bikes um, by different manufacturers. And today we're going to be talking about Scott and the road bikes, the carbon road bikes in particular. So uh, let's just go for the scottsparts.com, uh, the international uh, website. And we are going for bikes and then uh, road. Um, there is of course so much to talk about, so we will focus on the carbon range uh, today, carbon bikes range. Uh, these are the road bikes and we've got Foil, Addict, Soleil, uh, SR1, Speedster, Plasma and Contessa. Uh, just for you to know so far uh, that the Foil, Addict, the Soleil and CR1 are the carbon, bi carbon bikes. And then the Speedster is alloy, Contessa is alloy, both for women specific and also for men. That's the budget bikes. And then Plasma is the time trialing machine or Ironman uh, machine, of course, carbon bike. Uh, today we're going to be talking about these uh, Foil, Addict, Solace and CR1. Uh, I don't like the, this website. When you get to know this website, uh, you've got some uh, cool videos with, with Nino Schroeder and other riders, it's cool. But in terms of uh, explaining to us uh, the ranges of the bikes, uh, I don't like it, so I'm gonna just break it down for you. Let's start with the foil. The foil is of course the high-end carbon race bike used by uh, different uh, groups in the pelotons of Tour de France and other uh, Grand Tours. And, uh, Foil is the combination of, we can say it's a hybrid bike of just the light racing machine and the aerodynamics. So this is not the time trialing machine, but as you can see, uh, this bike is very aerodynamic. We don't have larger uh, images here, but all right. Uh, this bike is very aer aerodynamic. Um, it was very aer aerodynamic before the, the previous generation. It was also very stiff but it wasn't comfortable and Scott kind of admits that saying that they, they've been working on the uh, comfort uh, on this frame set now. This will be rather the option for the race uh, cyclist because um, uh, it is um, quite stiff, it's, it can still be kind of harsh, it's not as comfortable as the uh, Attic I'm gonna show you and the other models uh, and this one will be of course very very expensive. So when you go for the technologies here you can see the carbon fiber that is uh, it's made of and then of course it has the race geometry it's not very comfortable geometry uh, and then some more information about the comfort zone in this bike and then co cockpit integration i'm not a great fan of this uh, shaping of these um, handlebars this is a combo but it's so flat i'm not sure that uh, many hours uh, in the upper grip uh, would be comfortable for us so so it looks cool it is aerodynamic but it's not very comfortable and of course the aero technology and they have also the seat clamp integration if it works fine uh, if it's not noisy then it's it's good so this was the foil uh, let's look at the addict many grand tour riders would uh, go for this one because it's more comfortable they say the frame set it's, it's also lighter well, it doesn't matter so much because uh, the legal weight cannot be under 6.8 kilo uh, anyway. But if we look at the range of the uh, Addict bikes, uh, we've got of course some high-end uh, options. All of the bikes are of course full carbon with the full carbon forks. And we can also opt for the Addict gravel disc bike. That might be interesting. Let's just look at some uh, of the technologies. All right, so we've got here oversized bottom brackets. Uh, I do like the oversized uh, idea because it is uh, really stiffer and it makes uh, a better connection between the bottom bracket and the bearings uh, and the shell of the frame. Then we've got the tapered head tube of the Addict. Um, we've got the racing geometry and also some aero technology. It's kind of same technology like uh, as in the uh, foil. Uh, model but uh, it's not as aerodynamic. Uh, in the foil model uh, the rear brake would be here just behind the bottom bracket. Uh, in the Scott Addict is just standard option. It's very traditional way of assembling the, the brakes. So this is also a race bread, super light, very stiff uh, bikes, very good bikes, very expensive ones. 
and if you're all about racing 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 I would say addict would be a good choice here uh, which model I would take um, when my idea of buying bikes is usually just to opt for the cheapest components with the same frame set so I don't need the components from uh, addict SL bike if it's got the same frame set in addict 30 bike uh, I would just opt for this uh, this group set because uh, I would anyway change first of all the wheels so that's my my idea of buying the bikes then we've got the um, Soleil and CR, uh, CR1 the CR1 is the older in the range of the Carbon uh, Scott bikes uh, we've got three bikes these are very good bikes these are meant to be more affordable carbon bikes for us as you can see uh, they say about perfect balance of performance and comfort so this will be even more comfy than the, than the Addict bikes and when we see the technologies we have still the same kind of uh, carbon fiber and S-band construction so this is different way of looking at the uh, comfort um, in the bike and the fork here will be also a uh, carbon steer so full carbon fork but surprisingly for me it is not a tapered one why so? Perhaps it has to be more comfortable than the stiff, I don't know. But anyway, there is uh, no word about tapered head tube here. And the last one I'm gonna show in this uh, video is the Scott Solace. That's the newest model in this carbon uh, road uh, bikes of Scott. Um, this one is made for comfort. As you can see, uh, in the lowest range of these bikes we've got also the flat um, bar bike but the frame set will be the same but we've got two options here disc brakes or just uh, caliper brakes um, one interesting thing let's just look at the even the cheapest one without disc brakes as we can read here the Scott says that the Solis was designed to tackle the harshest of roads without you being affected that's nice so this one really is supposed to be the most comfortable in the carbon range of the road bikes here but where are the rear brakes that's interesting this is not the triathlon bike this is not the you know time trailing uh, bike but the brake caliper is uh, just here be, uh, behind the bottom bracket just as in the Scott foil uh, but Scott says that this is not due to the aerodynamics it's due to the flexibility of the seat stays so that's interesting thing and that's right, um, all of the bikes now are being made to uh, absorb some vibrations but these seat stays are meant to be stiff as well because uh, the brake is uh, operating there so that's a nice move to uh, take those calipers and put them just uh, behind the bottom bracket and make this uh, area very comfortable uh, what Scott says here, it looks nice I'm not sure whether it's just the marketing or, or a real game uh, but it looks uh, good they say that this frame frame of solace has two zones so these tubes here and the part of the carbon fork are made uh, for us in order to transfer our power uh, from our hands and legs into the pedals and then the comfort zone we've got here these uh, seat, uh, seat stays and the seat tube and the upper tube and the lower part of the fork are made for our comfort um, well it looks nice but uh, I think that all of the tubes have to be made both for the comfort and for the uh, power transfer but still this one is supposed to be the most um, comfortable bike surprisingly for me uh, the bike uh, being chosen for the uh, Paris-Roubaix uh, race very very harsh roads is the um, SR1 that's the most comfortable for the race uh, bikers if they are using uh, the SR1 in Paris but does it mean that the Solace is not uh, good enough maybe not maybe it's too heavy or something like that that is interesting and I'm looking forward to hear from from you what do you think about this but anyway these Solace uh, bikes uh, look quite nice and if they are really comfortable with these brakes uh, down behind the bottom bracket it's a nice option so that's it for the carbon bikes and stay tuned for the aluminum part. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.